Hey, Jeannie. Yeah, Bruce. Who's our guest on the show today? This morning, we have Smitha Chandra Thomas. Welcome, Smitha. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny and Bruce. Good morning, both of you. Today, I'd like to talk about why we must stop building glass buildings. Glass box buildings are to climate action what fur coats are to animal protection. Some may see it as a lifestyle choice, but for others concerned about the climate crisis, a ban sounds about right. An article I wrote about the problem with glass buildings was published in the Triple Pundit in 2016, about five years ago now. It was titled Shattering Glass Myths, Designed for Climate Action. I couldn't access it the next day and the editor told me that their website saw unusually high traffic and crashed. I'd like to think that the two are related. We wish so many people cared, right? Well, in April 2019, Two years ago, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said that we should ban glass buildings. His statement made people really mad. Real estate folks on LinkedIn and in the news were calling him crazy. New York Times had to publish an explainer, you know, saying that he didn't really mean a ban on glass buildings. Then in August 2019, the sustainability chairman of the Royal Institute of British Architects, Reba urged London to consider a glass tower ban. His name is Simon Sturgis. So he's the chairman of the Reba Sustainability Group, told The Guardian newspaper, if you're building a greenhouse in a climate emergency, it's a pretty odd thing to say the least. That's classic British understatement. To most people, glass buildings represent the modern world with their abundant daylight and views. Even smart buildings people ask me, you know, have you heard about the new smart glass technologies? They're really efficient. They can change their properties by season and by day. They're in all the green lead buildings. But the fact is that the smartest glass can't hold a candle to a well-insulated wall. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine a person standing practically naked in the middle of Times Square in New York. Let's say it's winter, it's blustery cold winds, and this person is wrapped in nothing but a sheet of plastic and drinking piping hot cups of coffee to stay warm. What would you think about this person? Now, imagine that this person does this consistently all year round. Six months later, it's the peak of summer, and now our plastic sheet wrapped friend is drinking ice cold water to stay cool as they sweat in that plastic sheet. Would we call this person smart? Would we say that they're dressed for the weather? This is the same issue with buildings clad in glass from top to bottom. As far as being climate smart is concerned, a sheet of glass is no better than a sheet of plastic that our friend was wearing. Why am I saying this? It boils down to the physical properties of glass. We all know that greenhouses for plants are built with glass. Why do we build greenhouses with glass? because glass is great at letting in sunlight and then trapping the heat inside. The heat gets trapped because the direct beams of sunlight are transmitted as shortwave radiation, which can pass through glass. But once the sunlight hits the surface, the reflected radiation becomes long wave radiation. Long wave radiation cannot pass through glass, so the heat gets trapped. This allows the plants to flourish. But we are not hothouse plants. We do not want this heat to get trapped inside the building in most climates and in most global locations for obvious reasons. In hot weather and in hot places, all the glass in buildings is adding to the air conditioning load. This drives up electricity use at the buildings, which drives up electricity production at the grid, which directly drives up power supply emissions. And this is a problem. Heat is transferred across glass in two ways. One is through sunbeams passing directly through the glass, some wavelengths of which we see as light, and this is called radiant heat gain. In winter conditions, we want the radiant heat gain during the sunlit hours in cold places. So that's a very specific use case for glass. We would only want to invite the sun in from the direction in which the sun is shining, but in other directions, too much glass is a bad idea even in cold places. This is because the radiant heat gain has to be balanced with a second type of heat transfer across the glass, and this is the conductive heat transfer. This is the heat transfer between the inside air and the outside air, 
through direct contact with the glass pane. And this heat transfer is happening 24 seven and glass is notoriously poor at managing this conduction. But I know that even here in our house, we have some coated glass, it has heat mirror and you know people love seeing the outdoors. Uh, what about these newer technologies? Can't they help? Sure, I mean, there is high performance glass. And you know, the fact is that our buildings last for about a hundred years, but most of these windows, even the ones with triple pane and krypton in it, those have a warranty for about 10 years, right? Eventually the gas leaks out and then the performance goes down. But even when it is new, let's look at how good it is. So the conductive properties of glass are measured using the U value, which is measured in BTUs, which is the British thermal units that we Americans still use to measure the quantity of heat. This U value is a measure of how much heat is transferred per square foot per degree Fahrenheit of temperature differential. So it's essentially measuring how good something is at transferring heat across its surface. Now imagine the conduction of heat across the material as heat flowing through pipes. A higher U value means a bigger heat pipe with better or higher heat conduction. A lower U value means a smaller heat pipe. So every material has a U value and a good, really good glass could approach a low U value of 0.2. That is an R5. What do we mean by R5? Inverse of U value is the R value, which measures the resistance to the heat transfer or how good something is that resisting the flow of heat. If the U value of the best window is 0.2, the R value, which is the inverse of the U value, becomes 1 over 0.2, which is R5. R5 windows are being researched and developed in labs, but they're still not common in the marketplace. The common high performance commercial glass that is available is still closer to R3 at the center of the glass, which is, you know, the best performance is at the center of the glass. And by the time it gets to the frames where you have much higher conductivity through the metal or the plastic, it becomes closer to R2 or R1. Now let's compare this with the humble fiberglass pad insulation, the pink blanket that we see stuffed between the studs in the walls of a home. An economical three and a half inch pad that we can buy at Home Depot starts at R11. So we were talking about a high performance window at R2. This R11 bag, just the bag, not yet including all the other wall materials, which add a little bit of resistance, is twice as good a blanket as compared to our best window, which was an R5. But an insulated wall can actually go much higher than R11. In fact, passive house standards are in the R40 to R50 range for where you and I are sitting in the Northeastern United States. This means that the heat loss across the insulated wall is a tenth of what the best window offers. So you have the R5 window and you have the R50 wall. For the typical good quality commercial and residential windows, we are actually looking at a factor closer to 20x. So as I said earlier, we can imagine the path of heat flow as a diameter of a pipe. If my insulated wall is a straw, then my best window is a hose pipe. And my typical window is more like a drain pipe when it comes to heat flow. So then there's the glass type that controls its shading properties based on how much sunlight is falling on it. This impacts the first heat transfer type, which was the direct radiant heat gain from the sunbeams. This radiant heat gain is measured using a unit called the solar heat gain coefficient or SHGC. Clear glass has a coefficient of about 80%, which means that about 80% of the energy from the sunbeams gets through and the rest is reflected or absorbed and then conducted. Now, if 40% of the light gets through, we say that the SHGC or the solar heat gain coefficient is 40%. SHGC is usually expressed as a factor, so we would say SHGC of 0.4. We don't want to make it very dark, so SHGC below 40% would be unpleasant, so we usually try to stick above 40% of 0.4, but compare that to a wall where the SHGC is zero, because none of that radiant heat gain is transmitted through a wall. So that part becomes zero. 
And then you have the other comparison for the U value where you're talking about 20X. So that's why, you know, even high performance class, even though it's great, it's nothing compared to a solid wall.